Welcome to Business Blueprint Wednesday. It's a, again, it's a, always a pleasure to be here to share a few uh, tips and you know to get some some distance or some to look at your business from an exterior point of view, so you can actually you know it's, it's good to step back and look at what's going on instead of just being in there all the time. And that's that's a good that's a good time to do this. So. Uh, Business Blueprint Wednesday, here we go. Today, we're gonna to be talking about leadership. There's a lot of, there's a lot, it's a big subject on the internet. If you look, I mean, it's it's all over HR, it's all over opinion leaders. People talk a lot about leadership. Have you, have you also witnessed that, uh, Kara? It seems to be what all comes up in my feed is definitely, it's like leadership. And a lot of times you hear about leadership versus managers, you know, that, so that sort of idea, yeah. It's a hot subject. Then why is it a hot subject? Well, it's a hot subject because it matters. Look, you got people that you you hired that you're supposed to be working with. How do you work with them, and how do you get the best out of them? How do you bring the best out of out of your staff? Right. I mean, there's a there's a there's so many theories on how to be a good leader, but I mean, I, I just just wanted to share with you. Let's start first, if you don't mind, Kara. Let's start first with. A definition of leadership. Huh? Uh, it says here, leadership is the ability to influence, guide, and inspire individuals or groups toward achieving common goals. What do you think of that? I love it. <laughs> yeah, that's workable, right? I mean, yeah. again, the idea of influencing, you so you you, you can't be a wallflower when you're an executive. I'm sorry, but you're there in the in the limelight. If you don't, if you don't like being in the limelight, being the person that is there for the staff, if you don't like influencing people, I'm sorry, just get another job. <laughs> it's like it's it's part of it's you know it's part of the DNA, if you will, of of of, of an executive of a leader. You got to be willing to influence. You got to be willing to guide and you got to be willing to inspire individuals and groups toward achieving a common goal. Okay. Now it's very good and it's all nice. And, and I really like this. Now, later on, he says uh, it involves setting a vision, making decisions. I'm going to repeat that again, making decisions <laughs> and fostering a positive environment where team members feel motivated and empowered. OK, so there's a few things in here, right? I mean, you got you got to be having a vision, a clear vision. Uh, you got to be making you got to be able to make decisions. Now, these two things are they connected together. Look, if you don't have a clear vision, how are you going to be able to make decisions? Right. OK, so I'm going to tell you, Carol, okay, let's, let's do it. Let's do a quick exercise here. OK, I'm, I'm going to use you as a guinea pig. I hope you don't mind. Okay, yeah. <laughs> so you and I were both driving, right? You're driving. I'm I'm on the passenger seat, and I tell you, mm. okay, all right. So, Kara, uh, just get us somewhere. Just drive somewhere. Yep. What you gonna do? I'm gonna do one of two things. I'm just gonna make a decision and go where I want to go. Um, and not tell you or just do it, but most likely I'm going to be sitting there being like, okay, well, what do you want to do? Where are we going? What's our purpose? Like, just pick you can be confused, right? Do you want you, me to drive, you you know, four hours away, or do you just want me to drive to the park, or where are we going? Yeah. Okay, so fair enough. Okay, so now th this is super large, right? It's like it's almost you tell somebody do something, right? Okay, that. Okay, let's let's make it a little bit more sharp, right? Okay. Um, Let's see, we are um, in a construction site and I, and I tell you, okay, so go get me some uh, some some good uh, so, some good uh, wood material to complete the project. Okay. So I'd still have a few more questions. I'd be like, well, what's the definition <laughs> of what's the project? What kind of wood material? Like, you know, I could come back with a tree stump. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like right. you, you can't you can't make a decision. You can't make a decision, but I cannot make a decision whether it's right or wrong. 
right? You know, if if you're gonna be painting, if you're gonna make a painting, right, and you're gonna be a, making a painting of a, of an ocean side, right, um, then you can make a decision. Okay, so you're gonna have lots of blues and not so much red, well, unless it's a sunset, you know. But what have you? You can make decision when this when you have a clear idea of where you're going. Right. Let's say I tell you, okay, so let's go to uh West Edmonton Mall, let's say. Okay. Uh now you know where to go. Right. Mm -hmm. Now I tell you what to go there, and then let's say you head out uh towards Banff, right? But I told you to go to West Edmonton Mall. Now I can make a decision. I'll say, look, you you're going the wrong highway here. This is not this isn't the way it's gonna go. No, I can guide and I can give you the proper direction because I got a good vision. A clear vision. So having that clear vision is essential. And some people think, well, it's just an administrative exercise. It's not. It's not. And that vision's got to be communicated to your staff. Okay, so you've worked with lots of staff, right, Kara? Yes. Okay. How many of those were able to read your mind? Um, I have a zero for like a gajillion record on that one. <laughs> Same here, right? <laughs> okay, so now how are they going to be able to understand where you're going if you don't tell them? Mm -hmm. So, you know, again, that is very important to dig in that purpose all the time, right? And, you know, the idea of uh, also fostering a positive environment. Well, okay, so what, what is a positive environment? Right. Well, a positive environment is an environment where people feel they're winning. They feel they're getting somewhere. They feel they're, they're, they're growing as a person. All of this. These are they feel safe. Right. All of these are part of fostering that environment. But again, that that foundation is to understand where you're going. And you yourself need to have a clear idea of where you're going, because if you don't. Your well, your directions are going to be all over the place. Okay, so call uh, call this guy. Oh, no, no. Okay, so did you call? Okay, that's fine. Forget about it. Uh, you know, just go out and take that list and do some cold calling. Uh, you know, two days after. Okay, yeah, scrap that. We don't do cold calling anymore. We're going to do emails. Let's go, right? As a business, as a staff member, getting that kind of direction, well, it's, it's, not, it's not good leadership because it's not positive, right? Now, positive, it, it, it's it's a very interesting word. You know, people would say like pluses or happy or, you know, uh, tending towards uh, a, a better something, whether it's health or safety or what have you, that would be positive. But there's another definition for positive, which I'd like to point out. Positive is also clearly defined without ambiguity. That is the definition of being positive. If I tell you to do something, it is not positive. If I tell you to do something good, it's still not positive, right? If I tell you um, to uh, take care uh, to, uh, um, like an example of something that would be like, a, you know, uh, please uh, finish to build wall, the north wall by the end of the day, as an example, well, this is a positive order. Right, it's 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 it is it's very certain, and there's no ambiguity into something like this. So, as a business owner or as a leader, people look to you for direction. Right? Why? Because you're the one on top. You see everything. Hopefully, you are. <laughs> if you're stuck in the bushes and you try to be a leader, you gotta you have a rough time. You gotta pull yourself out in a little bit. Right? But you know. It, it, you're the one on top. These guys, they, they don't know what the other guy is doing. They don't know about the inventory missing. They don't know about the miss, uh, the, 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 the accounts receivable. They don't know about any. You do. You know about everything because you're the executive. You know everything that's going on. Now, you're the one that can coordinate the actions and activity of your team by giving them clear-cut instructions on how to do things. And things that are forwarding the purpose of the organization to which, you know, hopefully your staff have abided to and they're excited about. You know, they, applied to, they applied to your business. They applied, they become an employee because 
they should somewhat fit in with the vision, with the goals that you have, correct? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Good. Uh, so giving them info, giving them direction, that forward, that goal that they signed up for should create alignment, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Good. So you get a vision, you get a plan of action, you give your orders or programs that are not unpopular, but are actually matching what needs to be done. And then people will then put their shoulders to the way. It's, it's, it's like physics. It, it will happen, right? These are the key things having to do with being a good leader. It's not how many cupcakes you bring to your staff and how, how many parties you throw and how much likable you are. Um, it has very little to do with being worker oriented, right? I did a whole talk about people worker oriented. Like, look, your staff need to be respected. Yes, they need to be uh, regarded with helpfulness, courage, compassion, intelligence, and empathy, right? Obviously, yes, right? But this, this is not where the rubber meets the road. Where the rubber beans the road is you as an executive, as a leader, are charged to give, to have a vision, to communicate that vision clearly to your staff, and to give proper direction to them. I'm not saying micromanaging here, uh, but to give them projects and activities that will support and get the company or the business closer to its goal. And once you've achieved that, well, then you, you get people backing you up. They will work overtime for you. They, they'll do lots of good work for you. Mm -hmm. And uh, you'll be a success as a leader. Okay. Uh, very, very important. Uh, it's about creating agreement. Really. Right. If you have your staff on board creating agreement with you, then, you know, it'll be fine. You won't have to push anybody. You really pull them. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, now, obviously, this doesn't happen everywhere. <laughs> and there's this factor of people having a mind of their own. Don't they care? Mm -hmm. Right. Now, somebody might be signing up on your team and not being completely on board. Or there might be a toxic personality. Just yesterday uh, at unveiling the, the disconnect, I did a whole, a whole presentation of the toxic personality. I got to be able to notice these guys and to, to see where they are because these guys, they will throw a wrench in the works, right? And um, and when you have a good team that's really backing you up and all of a sudden you see lots of disagreements and it's unusual, look, people will have disagreements. It's life, I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, but good people on your team, you'll be able to sort it out. They'll get over it. You'll sort it out. You reach an agreement and then you're going to move forward. But some some people just don't. They no matter what you do, or they they're in there for the wrong reason, right? Now, there's a couple of things you can do. You can get the person to abide to, and then to get them to see the, the okay, good. This is something it's good for me to do. As I would like to do this now, right? Kind of like re rekindle the purpose, so as to speak, right? That's that's your job. Sometimes people they run into so many walls that they just see the stops at one point, okay. Uh, again, I did another thing at unveiling. I feel like I'm doing a repeat on unveiling the disconnect now. <laughs> uh, episode number seven. I was talking about the effect of stops and barriers that it has on people's motivation level, right? But as a, as and tools that you can take as an owner, as a as a leader to get that fixed, right? So yeah, people will run into stops and barriers, and all of a sudden they start giving up, and the only thing they see is the stop and the barrier. So uh, you know. It's your job to solve it. Make sure that this, you know, dust them off and get them on their way, right? Or to see that the person is really uh, shouldn't be on board. And sometimes it's just it's just not a good fit, right? Okay, uh, let's say um, give me an example, Kara, of, uh, of of a, of a position you would hire for. Uh, project manager. Okay, good. Okay, so you're going to hire me as a project manager for X amount of dollars. Um, but I I absolutely do not like uh, working with people. 
I, I just, I just, I just, I just can't stand people. I, I think they, I just can't stand people. You know, you know. But I love the money. <laughs> so now, how long am I? So what? Okay. So now, it's a project manager. Uh, but what? What was the purpose? Tell me a little bit more. What would be the purpose of that of that position? So like, what would I be hiring them for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What What would the project manager do? Uh, they would be running uh, construction jobs. Okay, good. So the 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 purpose is to build beautiful house, and uh, to 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 get people to, you know, live into a beautiful safe house. I guess that would be the valuable final product. I, I'm just throwing it out there. Uh, time and on budget. <laughs> on time and on budget. Okay, good. Yeah. Now you're gonna hire me. I talk the talk. I'm like, I'm telling, yes, I'll do this. I've you know done that before, but I I just I just can't stand dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Now, okay, so I might be a good project management. I can I can be uh, a whiz at organizing things, right? But if I don't if I don't like people, then you tell me how what what's gonna happen. As a, you as a leader, you try to get me to do things. What's going to happen with me and you, uh, more like you as a leader, when you have me on that position? Well, you're not going to be doing a big part of your job, which is communicating with people, which is going to cause a ton of problems, uh, miscommunication, all that's going to kind of fall out. Um, and then if I'm coming at you and saying, hey, you need to go and talk to these people and deal with these people, Oh, there's so many different ways that could go. That could be just flat out refusing to do it. It could be attacking those people. It could be being very propitiative to them, you know, just to get them to go away. It could be blaming me. Oh, you know, boss lady says they have to do this. Um, and because, we know, people is what drives, you know, your organization when they're following policy. If you're scaring people away and breaking policy, your company's going to crumble. You're going to yeah. be on the a lot of money. You're going to lose a lot of clients. Yeah, you get lots of good staff too. Yep, right? absolutely. No, okay, am I a bad person? No. No, I just don't like dealing with people. So, okay, so I'm not the right person for the job. That's all it is, right? Right person, right seat, right? And, you know, as, as a leader, you will see these, these points where it's like, it's, it just doesn't jive, right? You know, and you got to be able to recognize that, right? And to put the person in the right position. Look, maybe the guy would be great at ordering, uh, at ordering things. Uh, you know, maybe he can be a good uh, logistics person. I don't know. Uh, this way, he doesn't have to deal with people; he have to deal with things, and everything goes goes well when this happens, right? So, but the key point is, you are to build agreements, and if the person doesn't agree with it, it's going to be very hard for you to do that. You're going to be recognizing this and be able to solve that, right? Um, and this is really the simplicity behind being a good leader. It's not complicated, guys. It really is not. You got to understand that, you know, you're there to influence, guide, and inspire. You need to have a, a good vision. You'll be clear on that vision that you have. If you're not, well, contact me. We'll sort it out. There's a whole, uh, there's a whole, pro there's a whole, uh, program we have. It's called the, 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 the business growth catalyst, where we go over all of this. So we, we empower you, make sure that you do have all the all the tools and you're really clear on, on, on your vision, on your values. You, you, you get all set up to actually really be a good leader. If you don't have that, you're gonna, it's going to be a little rough for you, okay? Mm -hmm. So I invite you to 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 contact me to see uh, to, uh, we'll we'll talk about this. I'd be more than happy to to discuss this with you. Or if you just want clarification on on your goals and your vision and all of this, hey, I'm there for you as well. Okay. So that's what I want to talk to you about. Um, did I miss anything, Kara? Um, you know what? I think you covered it all. But one thing I I would like to add to it is when you're talking about the leader and the goals and stuff, something I've done in the past is, mm -hmm. um, you know, try to get in that engagement and I've started to treat it like it's a democracy and it's not a democracy. Um, so I think a lot of leaders, you know, we, I think we try to do that. We try to cultivate this, um, 
culture. We try to engage people and we forget that we are ultimately the leader and that, you know, it's like we can take we can take input and feedback because a lot of times, hey, it's very valuable. Um, but I know when I was younger and kind of newer at it, I definitely treated it like a democracy. And um, so then you're trying to please everybody. And what ends up happening, we try to please everybody, right? So um, that was kind of on the flip side of what I've learned about, you know, a good leader. You have your people and you inspire them and you you uh, manage them and you, you know, you get them to work towards the vision and the goal. Um, but if everybody's kind of doing their own thing, it's like herding cats and nothing's going to get done. So it's, you know, it's not a democracy. You can take take that feedback. And if it incorporates into the bigger picture, then you can do that. But I don't know if there's a lot of people out there that are guilty of that, because I was I was definitely very guilty of that, right? I'm yeah. guilty of this. I've, I've done that too. You yeah. know? And at one point you go like, after, after a few months of doing this, you're running your business, but you feel it's not your business anymore. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's, not, it's not your business anymore. You've just handled the steering well over to, to everybody. And yeah. then you know, Joe Blow's got an idea, but Annie's got another idea. Now, if if you go with Annie, you're going to have Joe Blow upset. If you go with Joe Blow, you get Annie upset. No matter what, you're going to have an upset. I'm not going, right? It's it's, it's not good. It's, it's not a good place to be at. So you got to take ownership of where that ship is going to go. You're going to be the leader. And, you know, enthuse your staff, get them on board. But if the guy won't enthuse, they won't get on board and it's not his values. Well, I'm sorry to say, but maybe he doesn't belong in your team, mm -hmm. right? Not because he's a bad guy, just because the values are so different that you cannot create agreement, right? Yeah. That's a good point. I'm glad you brought this up. I forgot to talk about that. Thank you. That, no, that's, that's, that makes a lot of sense. Okay, good. Anything else? Are we good? I think we're good. Yeah, I think we're good. Okay, good. All right. I like to keep these short, to the point, but jam-packed with information. So uh, take it to heart. Uh, that's all. That's We're going to be signing off now on uh, Business Blueprint Wednesday for, for today. Yeah, it's a pleasure talking with you about this. Uh, and uh, we'll, we'll go over some other aspects of leadership, of uh, dealing with staff, and um, creating coordination, right? Uh, I'd like to go over this a little bit, just push this a little bit more, uh, a little bit more of a deeper dive into that aspect of uh, of running a business. And uh, we're going to go over that next week. So in the meantime, well, keep growing your business, keep at it, keep persevering. You got this. All right. I'll see you next week. Bye for now.